Hi everyone, welcome to week two of Gaining Kitchen Confidence, the first program in our four week fast track series. My name is Dina D'Alessandro, registered dietitian, nutritionist, founder and chief executive life changer at Dish with Dina. I've helped hundreds of patients and clients over the past few years meet their health and wellness goals and I am so grateful that you're here to join us on this journey. We hope that you've been settling in with your week one homework assignments so far. It's totally okay if you haven't gotten through everything just yet, or if you found that hour fast, track is a little too fast for you. Remember, no stress, no worries, work at your own pace. But if you've already wrapped up week one, give a like to this video and feel free to leave a comment below with your progress so far. In this program, there are four objectives that we hope you achieve at the end of the 28 days with us. The first is to become a savvier supermarket shopper. The second is understanding how to read the nutrition facts label on the back of food packages. The third is creating weekly meal plans that work within your schedule and budget. And the fourth is engaging and interacting with a community of like-minded people like yourself looking to get back on track with eating well, which you can do here in the comments below our videos, or you can head over to our private Facebook group, which is linked below. This week, we are going to introduce you to some nutrition information that I think might be somewhat eye-opening. As mentioned in week one's video, we believe that good health starts in the kitchen, but it also starts in the supermarket or grocery store or the farmer's market, wherever you purchase or obtain your food items. There's so much information packed into week two that we actually decided to split this week's video into two parts. For this week, the materials you'll need to download or at least refer to are linked below. The first is the nutrition facts label, and the second is something called the MyPlate Daily Checklist. You already have your activity log and goal agreement sheet from last week, so Please keep those on hand and you'll need to update them after watching this week's video. Since this week's focus is on nutrition education, I thought I'd take this opportunity to mention that while there might be many health and wellness professionals out there who include nutrition education, nutrition counseling, or health coaching in their services, and who all have the desire to help you support your health, only registered dietitians are uniquely qualified in providing patients or clients with what's called medical nutrition therapy, especially when working with people in managing their chronic conditions. So please be sure to ask for someone's credential, experience, education, and background whenever you begin a program with them. And you can learn more about what I do on the Dish with Dina channel trailer. For today, let's start with the nutrition facts label. You've seen this on the back of packaged goods, right? Especially in the United States, this is what we have here. Uh, the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, and the Department of Health and Human Services, or the HHS, they create dietary guidelines for Americans listed on the nutrition facts labels on packaged foods and also found online at choosemyplate.gov. Um, these amounts are fairly arbitrary though, and not to mention often confused Using. They do not take into account a person's life stage, level of physical activity, or existing chronic conditions. So understanding your own habits will help you make the eating choices that are best for you. And what better way to control and manage your health than knowing what you're eating. So before I get into it, I uh, want to point out something that the percentages given on these labels are based on a 2000 calorie diet, which seems like it's been chosen as an average number. So you look at the label and think this sort of applies to you, but to put this into perspective, let's take a look at two people at opposite ends of the calorie spectrum. The person on the left is born male, and the reason I mention gender is because in our profession we account for that in our calorie calculations, along with the other factors you see here, weight, height, age, and activity level. So in this person's case, just to sustain his daily energy needs, he requires about 3,400 calories a day. The person on the right is female, and as you can see, even though she's the same age, she's much smaller in stature and much more active than her male counterpart. She requires about 1,500 calories a day to keep her body running efficiently. So with those numbers in mind, every time the male buys a food item, he really should be buying two to satisfy his daily needs. And every time the female opens up a package of food, she might only really need about three quarters of the amount that's listed on the label. So I hope that this makes sense. And this is a very general overview that we will revisit in a bit when we talk about portions later in this video and meal planning next week, and hopefully go into more detail in some of the future videos as well. 
We're not going to go too far into the weeds here with all of the macro and micronutrients that are listed on this label. I'll save that for another group of videos, but I will focus on some highlights, namely servings per container, sodium and sugar. However, first and foremost, I want to point out, and this may be harsh, that in the case of packaged foods, the front of the package is usually what I consider to be fiction and the back is fact. Keep in mind that marketing consumers is how manufacturers get you to buy their products. So there are boxed cereals with flavors like mixed berries, but when you read the ingredients, there are no actual berries and there, uh, or there are granola bars boasting that they contain one serving of vegetables in them, but then the first ingredients listed as sugar. Same for fiber bars, protein bars, a lot of other snack and food items, unfortunately. So I want to clarify a couple things here. When I say that the front of package is fiction, I do mean that this is where most food manufacturers market to consumers and some will use various unsupported health claims. Exception to this are those um, stamps and symbols that you'll see that signify if something is kosher or contains allergens. These are regula regulated by the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA. These cannot be put on packages unless they're true, but I still stand by my claim. Don't believe everything you read, whether it's on food packaging or not, there is a lot of misleading information out there solely meant to increase food product sales. There's no such thing as gluten-free water. There's a lot of food that just is not necessarily considered to be organic or GMO modified. So just be conscientious, watch the language uh, that is used on some of these food packages, R write your congressperson if you feel like getting up in arms about these types of things as I do. I also want to point out the different names for sugars. Check out the link below where you can scan through the over 50 names for added sugar. Memorize them, bring the list with you to stores when you go check the ingredients whenever you go shopping, become a savvier supermarket shopper. Now, as much as we'd love for you to eat a primarily whole food, meaning minimally processed diet, sometimes that's just not realistic. And keep in mind that there are things like rice and beans that are going to come in packages with labels on them. They're both healthy options. You just want to kind of teach yourself how to be a food detective when you go shopping so you know what you're getting. For starters, we want you to check servings per container. Is this item enough to feed just you, your whole family, anyone else you're preparing foods for? If not, then make adjustments accordingly when you purchase these items. Next, please pay attention to the amount of sodium in the item, especially if you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure, or cardiovascular disease, or if you have a family medical history that does include things like hypertension, stroke, and heart attack. Over 75% of sodium consumption in the United States comes from the added amount of salt in processed foods, and any package item is at the very least considered minimally processed because it's not in its whole form. So a good rule of thumb for this is that the number next to sodium should be no more than two times the number next to calories. Yes, the units are different, one is in milligrams and the other is in calories, but you're just comparing the numbers. So in this fictitious food item here, there are 250 calories, 250 times two is 500, and the sodium is at 470 milligrams, which makes it less than 500. So that's a moderate amount of sodium in a food product, but it shouldn't really be an issue if the rest of your meal or your day is fairly lower in sodium. If you find it to be higher and you'd prefer to have something lower in sodium, then by all means, look for a comparable product that is marked as low sodium, but also compare the other items and ingredients listed on the package because when one thing is removed from a food item, something else is usually added to it to make up for flavor, which we will discuss a little bit when we get into the ingredients section. Check the sugars listed on the label. Sugars can be naturally occurring or added by the food manufacturer, and they are part of the carbohydrate family. So don't worry too much about the total carbs in a food at this point. Again, unless you're managing a chronic condition like diabetes, which I'll teach you about in another video series, but instead check to see that the sugars themselves fall no higher than say seven to 12 grams per serving, especially if you are dealing with diabetes or have had even high triglycerides come up in any of your more recent cholesterol blood tests, the last time say you went for a physical exam, as we're starting to see that added sugars and not just saturated fats actually play a role in elevating cholesterol levels as well, especially where triglycerides are concerned. 
In your downloadable materials, the Nutrition Facts label document reflects the new version that we'll be seeing soon. I believe effective 2020, all manufacturers are going to start having to label their foods like this, um, but some of them have already started putting that on their packages. This calculates the total servings per container, and it also separates out, separates out the added sugars per serving, so you no longer have to be a food detective to figure out what sugars are potentially occurring naturally and what have been dumped in by the manufacturer. If you do end up purchasing a food with a higher sugar content than what we recommend, then you can do a few things. The first is check the ingredients list for the word sugar or any other name used for added sugar. And there are a lot of them, as I mentioned before, because ingredients are listed in order of weight so much like a recipe, if you're arranging it by like one cup, half a cup, a quarter of a cup, a teaspoon. So the word sugar or whatever the word is used for it should appear hopefully as far down the list as possible. However, in cases like ice cream, like it is what it is. It's a sugary food. Make your decision to buy it, enjoy it, savor it. Don't be guilty about it. Do not get the sugar-free brand if you can avoid it. Because like the removal of sodium that I mentioned earlier, there will most likely be the addition of another ingredient that may be difficult to digest or somewhat unpalatable if, like me, you have issues with uh, sugar alcohols or artificial sweeteners. And I'd rather you just eat and enjoy the real stuff, except, as I mentioned, if you are managing diabetes or you have a condition that requires you to consume low sugar or sugar-free items. You could also do it yourself, right? So for example, flavored yogurt, the types that have fruit on the bottom or come with those flip top ingredients, they might have up to 29 grams of sugar. So buy plain and add your own fruit or honey or whatever to sweeten it up. You're in control. The next thing you can do is split it. So for example, sugary beverages, while they're not the healthiest thing in the world, people drink them. You can have half of a cup now and half of a cup later. You can dilute it with seltzer and drink half now and drink half later. If you are purchasing a, a sugary type of cereal, um, you know, maybe do half and half with some other non-sugary cereal. Uh, again, unless it's dessert, then just eat it and enjoy it. The issue here is just to be careful of how often you spike your blood sugar. You don't want to put yourself in that pre-diabetic state and uh, suffer any consequences later down the line, putting you at risk for certain conditions. We're going to stop here to let everyone catch their breath for a bit. This has been quite a lot to take in, and we will pick up again in part two, where we'll venture into teaching you about the My Plate Daily Checklist. So please join us there.